With the successful reboot of the Donkey Kong Country series in 2010, Retro Studios provided a sequel that takes everything we love while fixing the flaws, expanding the game, and continuing to do the long-running series proud. Donkey Kong is back, and he is ready to celebrate. Too bad the Snowmaids are not too keen on this Kong's birthday plans. Donkey Kong Island is frozen over and the Kongs are blown away, leaving our ape friend to take back his home and finally get his kick. This 2D side-scroller takes everything the Donkey Kong Country series is known for and builds on it. Instead of DK and Diddy, this time around the two of them are joined by Cranky Kong and Dixie Kong, each adding unique abilities that can be used in any situation. Diddy has his jetpack which allows him to hover in place or move around for a short period of time, Dixie has her ponytail which allows for a small double jump while floating down, and Cranky has his cane to jump on spikes and get some extra height. Each character is used to help DK through the levels, but every time you can select between the three, I always found myself going with Dixie. Providing that small second jump, she is by far the most viable companion to use. The only character really missing something unique in this game is DK. He has nothing special to him, and yet he is always the main focus. It really shows the hollowness of playing as DK when you only have him to play with. Added moves to your adventure is picking up enemies and throwing them along the way, with a team combo special that can provide you with coins, one-ups, or hearts. Again, this is why Dixie just is a step above every other character. Her special with DK gives you extra hearts that add on to your original hearts, making them gold. Diddy gives you extra lives, but those are a dime a dozen in this game, and Cranky gives you coins, which if lives are a dime a dozen, then I don't know, coins are a quarter a dozen. It's not even a thing. Everything leans towards Dixie and Tropical Freeze. Exploring the highly detailed levels really allows you to feel the world around you. The controls now going back to the traditional Pro Controller instead of the Wiimote and Nunchuck make rolling and precision jumping much friendlier. Levels are filled with secret areas to find along the way, with a couple of hidden exits to keep you exploring these massive levels. With the ability to customize controls, you can also play any way you want to. The difficulty from Donkey Kong Country Returns has also been scaled down. The various support items you can buy in the game allow for things such as invincibility and extra hearts. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Games are going away more and more from extra lives, and frankly, I'm fine with that. Getting lives in Tropical Freeze is a joke, and getting 99 before World 3 is completely possible. Why even have them other than people from 1995 that want them? At this point, I am all for just getting rid of extra lives. Tropical Freeze certainly gives the feel of a Winter Wonderland adventure, but it is far from the main style of the game. All of the levels have great detail and time put into them, each feeling more unique than the last. The silhouette levels are a stunning visual art that you will rarely find in any games of this style. If the beauty of the levels don't draw your eye, then I promise you that the tunes will surely keep you humming along for hours. For a 2D platformer, there's a fair bit of content provided. Levels feel much longer taking up to 4-5 to five minutes instead of the usual 2 minutes for a Mario level, and with that the puzzle pieces and Kong letters have been brought back to collect in each level. Collecting all the Kong letters in each level of the world will provide you with a challenging bonus level at the end. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is certainly a sequel that does justice not only to the Wii's Donkey Kong Country Returns, but also to the franchise as a whole. For those looking for a good platformer on the Wii U, this is certainly a must-buy. 